Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about eyeshadow palettes that I really need to declutter, but I just can't for whatever reason. So basically how I got the idea for this video is I was going through my eyeshadow palettes and trying to get rid of a few just to clear up some space for some new palettes. And then I have these eyeshadow palettes that have been at the top of my get rid of list for months and months. And then I'll like swatch the shadow or there's some sentimental value behind it and it just goes right back in the drawer and I just can't get rid of it. So these are the palettes that every time I go to declutter eyeshadow palettes, I've picked them up, I've tried to give them up, and I just can't. These ones just keep coming back. So if you want to see what palettes those are, then just keep watching. I definitely have a hard time getting rid of eyeshadow palettes. Makeup in general, I'm pretty good about being able to throw it away once it's old or once I really no longer use it and have no care for it. But I've definitely gotten bad as I've started to get more and more into YouTube. And I'm even worse when it comes to eyeshadow palettes because eyeshadow palettes are my favorite part of makeup. I have these connections to eyeshadow palettes. I just can't get rid of them. I love eyeshadow palettes so much. So these are ones that I... I, I just can't. I need them. <laughs> I, I don't really like them and I don't really use them, but I need them. So the first batch of eyeshadows that always are at the very top of the list are the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palettes. Now I have two. I have the original regular chocolate bar, which looks like this, and then I have the Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar. I mean, these are old, but they aren't super old. I actually was late onto the chocolate bar train. I purchased these after they had been around for a few years. They came in like a bundle deal for Black Friday, and I loved them at the time. Like these have actually gotten use for me and for some reason I just can't declutter them. I justify it because they're brown, they're really good colors, they're really good to travel with. These I don't really believe are expired. Some of the colors are really pretty. These are traditionally pretty colors. I think these are definitely outdated as palettes. Just all of the cool new pretty palettes that have come out you can definitely tell these are quite outdated. But I can't get rid of these because one, I feel like everybody knows what the chocolate palettes are. I think they are great as resources to use, things to compare to. And they are like really, really good colors. So I just can't get rid of them. They're super cute. They smell like chocolate and they're really nice brown colors. I almost never reach for them. But these are like OG palettes that I really feel have some value to me. And this one, I have no idea why I keep it. It's the Sweet Peach palette from Too Faced. I don't know if you guys recall, but this is really one of the first items of makeup that really sold out. There was a rush to pick it up and then you legitimately couldn't buy this palette for months. This was years and years ago. I've been into makeup and the YouTube stuff for many, many years and this palette was a big deal. And honestly, ever since I've gotten this palette, I hardly have ever used it. Even when I first got it, it just wasn't something that I grabbed for all the time. I find the color scheme to be quite boring and just uninspiring. And I know this is leading to the fact that, yes, Morgan, you should declutter it. You don't even like it that much, but it smells really good. It's super overpowering, but I love the smell of sweet artificial things. But the colors are pretty. They're boring, but they're pretty. They're usable. And I kind of justify it. Well, I'm already keeping the chocolate chocolate bar palettes. I might as well keep the Sweet Peach palette and it's great as a reference for my channel. Can't do it. These are just OGs. They're so easy to refer back to. I just have to keep them. I can't get rid of them. Now these next palettes, I'm kind of proud of because I actually have gotten rid of a few of them in the collection and these are the Lorac Pro palettes. Now these Lorac Pro palettes I used for years. I loved them. They were my favorite eyeshadow palettes my favorite eyeshadow brand and I think sentimental wise I can't get rid of these because the rock pro is really what started my eyeshadow obsession now I've always had an eyeshadow obsession but this was the first true formula that I actually fell in love with so the original the rock pro one palette that actually was old used abused disgusting I had to get rid of it I always tell myself I would buy myself a fresh one I never did get around to that I got rid of that one and I'm proud of that but of course, I collected all of them. So I have this one right here. I have this one, which actually I used quite a lot. I used this one 
a ton in college and then I graduated to this one and then I used this one a lot in college. Those have gotten so much use. They have such deep dips in them. And then of course, don't get me started on the Mega Pros. Now honestly, I haven't picked up these palettes in months. I just know I've used these for years. I was absolutely in love with the formula. Now that I've tried so many more different formulas, I don't love the formula quite as much. I don't think their shimmers are as reflective as I like. They're kind of more subtle nothing special about them the mattes are still extremely pigmented and blend extremely well but for the most part the shadows aren't as amazing as I used to think that they were but they're still really nice and I just can't get myself to get rid of like the mega pro 3 because all of these are really great everyday colors very blendable extremely good formula so I can't get rid of the mega 3 because I love big palettes. I do. And I love the colors in here. Then I have the original Mega Pro palette. I don't love this one quite as much, but still, I just love how sleek these are. The colors are just so easy to grab for for every day. The sentimental value that these palettes have, like, they mean a lot to me. I used to be obsessed with the Lorac Pro formula before I was into YouTube. I had a couple other of the really large ones, but I did declutter those. Another Mega one was really abused and gross, so I had to throw that one away. And then there was another one. It's the pink one. It was the newest Mega Pro palette from like two or three years ago. That one I did not like. I thought the formula on that one was really bad, but there's just a few that I have to hold on to. I really love these. I'm gonna have to use those again sometime soon and see if the formula is really as great as I used to think it was. This next one has absolutely no sentimental value to me other than every time I swatch it, I'm like... <sighs> Mm, and I put it back. <laughs> this is the ColourPop Golden State of Mind palette. This is from the early days of when ColourPop came out with their eyeshadow palettes. And honestly, I have never used this. This was in their holiday collection. In fact, there was another one from this particular holiday collection, which I think is in my box of palettes that I need to give away. I should have pulled that one out for this video, but I'm going to leave it in there because it made it to that box. So that was a big deal. But this one, it's all shimmer and I'm just like I don't need this and then I'll go and I'll swatch a random color and they're all beautiful shimmer shades with just a hint of glitter to them super reflective really great selection for whatever matte palette you pair it with so this is a palette where I know I don't want it I know I don't need it it has no real purpose in my collection and then I swatch it and then it goes back to its home even now I'm like these are so pretty, shiny, glittery. I love them. This is my style. <sighs> So it's gonna sit there unused for a few more months. This next one is a palette I don't believe you can get anymore. I don't think you can get that ColourPop one either, but this is the MAC Queen Supreme Palette. They came out with this whole line of these really long rectangular palettes, and honestly, I quite enjoyed them. I thought they were really fun looking. Queen Supreme looks like this. It's an all metallic palette, and the reason I cannot get rid of this palette is simply because of the highlighter. I never use any of these lid shades, but this highlighter is the most smooth highlight formula. It blends into the skin. I don't know if you guys could see that, but it's such a smooth highlighter. It really blends into the skin and looks seamless. It just looks like it is one with the skin. It's one of my favorite highlighters, honestly, and I just feel like it's so silly to keep this palette because I only use it for the highlighter. Occasionally, if I'm using this and this is sitting out, I'll grab for these, but I'm only keeping this for a highlighter. You guys can't purchase it, so there's no need for me to talk about it in videos, so there really is no need to have this in my collection, but I love this highlighter. It's so good. Random, but it's good. The next palette that I have is from from Violet Voss and this is the Holy Grail palette. Now Violet Voss is not a brand that's really talked about too much on YouTube anymore. It was definitely more popular back in the day and I had gotten this in a BoxyCharm palette and I was very excited because I had never tried the Violet Voss formula. Now when I did get this in a BoxyCharm, Violet Voss wasn't talked about as much. It was kind of dying. That's why it went to BoxyCharm and I've only used this a handful of times. I've never had any problems with the formula. The fact that this is the only Violet Voss palette that I have in my collection is what makes me want to keep it because I do have a collector's mentality as far as makeup and as far as being able to reference on my channel. Just to keep myself knowledgeable, I want to have the formula on hand. It's not a popular palette anymore. Not a ton of people have this palette, but I keep it because it's the only thing from Violet Voss that I own. They've come out with a lot of of cute really mini palettes but nobody still is really talking about their brand. I just don't know how they're making money but 
that's none of my business and yeah I just can't seem to get rid of it because it's the only Violet Voss palette that I own and it is pretty and it works very well and the few times that I've used it I've really enjoyed it so I do have a couple of ABH palettes to talk about with you guys and I will be honest the reason that I can't get rid of them probably the biggest one is that I already own so many of the ABH palettes that I'm just like what are two more why just get rid of these when I have all of the others again that collector's mentality is really unhealthy for me but the first one I want to talk about is Riviera this came out earlier in 2019 and this is probably my least used ABH palette of them all I don't think I've picked this up since I put up my review and three looks video here on my channel it's a little bit more wearable than you would think but for the most part I don't grab for it because it's not wearable at first glance but let me tell you why I can't get rid of it this shade right here Mediterranean let's see I know my hand has some that right there is why I can't get rid of it <sighs> it's so pretty that's not the only reason I mean look at these shades they're literally stunning how could I get rid of it when you have these beautiful unique shimmers in this palette even right now looking at this on my hand I'm like ooh, I need to use that palette so yeah like this is one of my least favorite ABH palettes to come out I'm not talking about the quality but color story wise and how much I would wear it like no I would never really wear this palette and then the next palette that I can't get rid of is the prism palette it's just not really that exciting of a color story to me there's a lot of muted colors in here but there's a lot of deep shades that I just will never use like these two shades right here this neon shade just overall this color story has never really spoken to me I bought it because at the time I didn't have a lot of ABH palettes this was one of my first and it was on sale because I guess it couldn't sell so that's when I picked it up but I can't get rid of it because I just have so many of the others that I might as well keep this one keep it for reference you never know when they're gonna come out with a palette where you're like this just looks like the ABH ABH prism here's what the ABH prism looks like no it's not a bad palette and actually it is very very wearable looking at it but it's so boring it doesn't excite me I never use it I did a look with it in the very very beginning of like my makeup Instagram and the look was really pretty but yeah this is just like a random palette I feel like that was in their line it doesn't really align with a lot of the other fun palettes that they've come out with these are like super pretty palettes these are by ace beauty I picked these up at Riley Rose which by the way the Riley Rose in my area closed and I'm devastated because I loved that store they have the cutest stuff but anyways I picked these up from Riley Rose and this whole brand has really beautifully curated palettes so this one is classical paradise just such unique colors and then I have paradise fallen which look that okay I'm just gonna put that back in anyways that's never happened before but this is such a unique color story I never really see purple palettes that are like this I mean this one gives me subculture vibes from ABH but for the most part I really feel like this brand curates such original palettes but to be quite honest the quality on this is just not that good but I find these palettes to be so unique that I can't get rid of them I don't own anything like these palettes in my collection they're gonna continue to stay in my collection because they're so pretty to look at but the formula definitely takes some work and that's why I want to get rid of it because the formula is just not that good but they're just so pretty so they're gonna stay so these next two palettes I need to get rid of because they're kind of getting old they've seen better times and these are two morphe palettes I have the 25a and the 25b I bought these the very first day that these palettes released they have since changed the packaging but I personally I like this packaging I know it is so cheap but I love how I can just see all of the colors right here honestly the both of them are kind of the same palette one is just more more warm than the other and I couldn't decide and I got both but it's literally like 50 shades of the same brown I can't get rid of this because I love how many browns they are I love brown so much and I use these two palettes all of the time when I was doing makeup on girls in college I haven't really talked about this that much but how I got into makeup artistry and like doing makeup on other people not just myself was I made a little bit of money on the side doing makeup for girls in my college I didn't 
have a lot of money. Obviously, I was a college student. I didn't have all of the luxury makeup items that I am able to have now. And I remember being a junior in college, sitting on the top of the bunk bed in my college sorority house, ordering these the day that they came out along with like a little brush set from Morphe. And I was so excited because these were my first items from Morphe. And at the year that I ordered them, Morphe was huge. Like I know Morphe is huge now, but it was like in its prime, just beginning, just growing before they really changed and rebranded and innovated the company like these are quite original morphe palettes and just the story behind these like i recall this day like it was yesterday and all of the details i just remember it and i just remember the pure excitement that i was spending my hard-earned money on from something that was purely from youtube from my favorite influencers and I used the code Kim Tai. I remember that. I used to be obsessed with Kim Tai's makeup channel. She doesn't really do makeup anymore. Yeah, these are more sentimental than anything, but also I just really love brown and I love all these options. And I wouldn't do anybody's makeup anymore using these, but I don't know. These are really, really special to me. Last two palettes, they kind of go hand in hand. And these are from Pure, and I've actually reviewed both of these on my channel. Pure was a brand that I used to review when they would come out with new items earlier on in my channel. I kind of stopped because I felt like they got very gimmicky, but there was a time where I really felt like they were creating good quality products. And I'm not saying they don't anymore, but I've just kind of lost interest in the brand. But these are two very interesting palettes that they came out with at the same time. This is the Creator palette. Very unique because you can actually like pull this foam part off and you kind of have like a little z palette to put whatever you want in but i've always just kind of kept it how it came and the formula on these shades are so beautiful i was really in love with this palette when i got it and the shadows have since dried out a little bit they're not as creamy as they used to be but they were so creamy to begin with that they're they're still quite creamy now and do you see how beautiful and metallic and pigmented they are i just can't get rid of it like it's so pretty and then you could like pull this out and I, it's such a cool palette like this is one of the best palettes from pure i was so excited about that and then also with that collection they came out with the visionary palette which is actually very sleek packaging and this is purely for the colors that i can't get rid of it it is so stunning. These palettes came out almost over two years ago. And in my review, I pointed out that these shadows were only good for six months, like according to the back. And I guess that's because the formula was just so creamy and wet, but it's very odd for palettes to be only six months. Usually they're at least like a year to 24 months. No, these still feel so creamy though. And they're so stunning. See, this is why I can't get rid of them, you guys. Look at this. They're so so pretty oh my goodness but the reason why I think I want to get rid of them is because one according to the back they've been way past their expiration date and two I just don't talk about pure on my channel as much anymore so these aren't something that I grab for because I know I don't really need to reference to them but they're just so beautiful and I just thought they were a really original release those are the palettes I've been contemplating and trying to get rid of for months but for one reason or another I just can't do it they're gonna stay in my collection there are so so many amazing anti-consumerism channels out there, channels that encourage you to downsize your makeup, use what you have. I'm not that channel. I'm not going to tell you to declutter your makeup or give you tips on decluttering your makeup when I can't even do that. Makeup makes me happy. I enjoy having makeup. I enjoy going through my collection. I enjoy sitting in my room and swatching palettes that I never use at night. That's what makes me happy. So that Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's definitely a little bit more different than I typically do, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't yet subscribed to my channel, I sure do hope you take the time to do so, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys, have a good one.